Windbreaks are a popular best management practice in Hawaii that offer multiple long-term solutions towards regenerative farming goals, as well as overall co-management goals for food safety and resource conservation. Windbreaks are valuable investment and often are established on new farms prior to crop establishment, but can also be planted on previously established farms that are looking to integrate more best management practices. Strong winds can pose many production and conservation issues for a farm, and so this video aims to help lay out the general steps for implementing a successful windbreak with long-term benefits. We feature a farm with a recent windbreak installation, as well as pro tips from the farmers to help guide planning. A windbreak installation is a great code management practice to consider for your farm, with benefits to conservation, production, and food safety. While there is a lot of variety for what benefits a windbreak can offer, some may include reduces soil erosion, protects plants from wind damage, enhances plant growth, enhances wildlife habitat, reduces and intercepts airborne particulate matter, chemicals, and odors, improves irrigation efficiency, increases soil health and soil carbon. Hua Orchards on the North Shore of Oahu installed a windbreak to protect the areas of the orchard that will eventually be in production. One reason why we planted trees here is to try to imitate a more natural environment. Some of the crops that we grow are sensitive to these strong winds that and, uh, many years ago some, some of the forests were taken down and so we're trying to copy what was natively in this area and some of these lowland forests and also um, growing some fruit trees to produce uh, produce for the local market. A windbreak is the first line of defense and a long-term solution for food safety. At this site, a windbreak protects the farm from pollution from the road, livestock contamination from the ranch above them, and provides habitat for predators of common pests, such as rats. Rodents are a big pest concern for avocados, as well as a food safety concern, and so trying to create habitat um, for their natural predators um, is to everyone's advantage here. This windbreak will help the farmers reach conservation goals by improving water use efficiency, improving soil health, and adding biodiversity to the farm ecosystem. When considering benefits to production, it's also helping to reduce a plant's loss of water through transpiration and reducing wind stress upon the plant. To get started, you'll want to have the following items on hand. Measuring tape, tea posts, mallet, string, six to eight inch landscape staples, weed mat, flags, hand torch or utility knife, shovels, soil amendments, an irrigation system, and your tree seedlings. When selecting tree species for your windbreak, consider native trees that may be most adapted to conditions in your region, as well as other tree species that have proven themselves suitable to the area making sure all selected trees will reach heights taller than the desired crops and will have enough density to fit your needs. Trees that tolerate wind and produce a useful product such as wood or fruit are also good choices for agroforestry. A few examples of species often used in Hawaii are neem, aali'i, mahogany, milo, koa, panax, bamboo, and glaricidia. Hua Orchards has selected a mix of species for their windbreak. They recommended neem, a tree native to India that is very drought tolerant, and also native species such as koa, milo, and aali'i, which are naturally suitable for region conditions. Determine the direction of the prevailing winds. The windbreak should be installed to be perpendicular to the prevailing wind direction to most efficiently block undesired sediment and pathogens from landing on production fields and introducing risk from neighboring areas. Once you've selected a location, install two T-posts at either end of the location and tie a string between them to create a straight line where the windbreak will be established. It's recommended to mow the grass as close to the ground here as possible to best prepare for the weed mat. Next, roll out the weed mat and staple it down every six to 10 feet on both sides with two people working together to keep the mat pulled tightly. Then measure out desired spacing for the tree plantings and mark on the weed mat with a flag. 
Here, eight foot spacing is recommended. When the wind is low, use a hand torch to burn 12 to 14 inch wide holes at the location of each flag, or alternatively, cut an X into the mat with a utility knife. Once the site is prepared, it's time to dig holes. At each flag, dig a hole approximately two cubic feet. If you have information about your soil from a soil test, add the appropriate amendments to the hole and the backfill soil. It's recommended to obtain a soil test prior to planting soil amendments to avoid adding excess nutrients, as well as avoiding deficiencies. Here, the trees were amended with compost, gypsum, lime, and a nitrogen fertilizer with measured amounts suitable to the soil's current condition. Digging can be a very big task, so it's helpful to plan ahead and make sure you have enough assistance. Next, you're ready to plant the tree seedlings. Lay the tree down, tree pointing against the wind, and just roll the bottom of the tree with your hand like this. And then you should be able to basically just like pop it out. And you can see this one looks pretty good. Not too much constriction. We can kind of loosen these a little bit, but we don't want to damage it too much. And we'll kind of level the hole out. Again, we want to try to keep it nice and straight the best we can. And then we're going to fill it in the back fill. Make sure to avoid air pockets around the root ball by tamping down the soil gently after planting and also heavy hand watering to help settle the soil around the plant and ensuring it remains straight. To best support new trees, setting up an irrigation line is helpful if available. While you don't want to be selecting trees that you have to plan to irrigate continually, some locations may require it to become established. Here, three gallons per week is sufficient per tree in winter months while the trees are newly planted. Pressure compensating drip emitters are recommended for the irrigation line so that the trees will get the same amount of water regardless of any pressure changes in the line along the windbreak. And then this is a drip emitter. This is a two gallon per hour drip emitter. So this is pressure compensating. So because we're on a hill, that's really important that these top trees will get the same amount of water as the bottom. For windbreak maintenance, check for any irrigation leaks and make sure all trees are receiving water regularly. You'll want to make sure weeds are cleared from around the tree regularly as well. You can also mulch the area around the tree to reduce the weed pressure. Stake smaller seedlings to ensure their stability during higher winds. 5 8 inch 6 foot bamboo is recommended, as smaller and shorter stakes may not support the plant through its establishment period. Planting a variety of tree species will allow you to see which trees will do well in your area, knowing that you'll need to thin the row as trees get bigger anyways, and can select those most suitable. Depending on soil type and how hard the soil is prior to digging, it may be helpful to set up the irrigation line prior to planting to soak the holes and make digging easier. You've now learned the basics of windbreak installations for your farm. Happy planting!